Hallelujah. Congratulations. You are now a child of God. If you repeated that prayer and you never met Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are now a joint heir of Christ. According to Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. So now that you've accepted Christ as your Savior, and He's going to show you the way to heaven through the power of His Holy Spirit, I want to share with you the benefits of the rock and His riches of His grace and glory, all His spiritual blessings that you are now a part of. I want to explain to you the benefits of the rock. The benefits of the rock is an analogy for riches of Christ's kingdom. So you will have benefits of the riches of Christ's kingdom, the rock. This is what you receive by your act of faith. Just by stepping up to the altar and asking Jesus to come into your life, this is what you now have as a believer. There are 21 benefits, maybe more, but these are all the Holy Spirit gave me. And I'm going to go through them 1 through 21 and let you know who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ now that you accepted Christ as your Savior according to Ephesians 1, 13. Benefit number one, you have been delivered from the power of sin. And that's in Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 18. Sin can no longer control you as it did in times past. You have a choice now to turn away from it. The Holy Spirit is in you now to convict you and turn you away from that sin. It will not be so easy to fall into because you've been delivered from the power of sin and no longer have a stronghold on you. And you will soon be getting over all these sins that you're struggling with. Benefit number two. You have been justified by faith. Titus chapter 3 verses 4 through 7. Romans chapter 3 verses 22 through 25. Justified by faith. Justified means that just, as, just if I had never sinned. So now that you have faith and you put your faith in Christ, it's just like you never sinned. You have a clean record. You've been justified, not found guilty in the eyes of God because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Benefit number three, you are seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. And that's in Colossians chapter one, verses 12 through 14. Benefit number four, now you have access to God. You can pray to God without feeling guilty because the Holy Spirit is going to help you pray when you don't know how. And that's in Ephesians 2.18 and Romans 8.26. Benefit number five, you've been baptized in the body of Christ, being a member of the body of Christ who is the head of the church, which is his body. The church is Jesus' body, and he's the head, according to Colossians 1.18. And you're a member of his body, and you've been baptized into his body. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. Benefit number six. You have a mediator and a propitiator. A mediator is somebody who goes on your behalf when you make a mistake in sin. He talks, Jesus talks to God for you. And he, he talks to God and shows God, show God his blood. He shows God the blood that he shed for you. And he asks you to, he asks God to pardon your sin. A propitiator is a substitute. Jesus has been our substitute. Like I said earlier, he went to hell for us so we wouldn't have to go to hell. He died for us so we wouldn't have to die for our sins. He died for our sins and went to hell for us. God judged him as a sinner 
he pretended that Jesus was us and he killed Jesus for us. That's why it's important that you accept Jesus as your savior. Now you have all the benefits that Jesus has. So you have a mediator and appreciate propitiator. And that's benefit number six. You can find that in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Benefit number seven. You have been adopted a child of God. Just have a just as an orphan be adopted to a new family, you are, you've been adopted to the family of God. And that's in Ephesians 1:5, 1, 1 John 3, 1, Galatians 4, 7, Galatians 3, 26, Romans 8, 15 through 17. Benefit number eight, you have power over Satan. Like I said, you can't say now that the devil made me do it. Your choice is stronger than the devil's voice. He can no longer make you sin. It's your choice. You have power over seven, Satan. That's benefit number eight. And you can find that in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Isaiah 54, 17, Matthew 16, verse 18. Benefit number nine. You've now been given spiritual gifts. You may speak in tongues. You may heal the sick. You may have the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge. You may be able to uh, do what 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 28 tells you. These are your spiritual gifts that you've been given. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 28. Romans 12, 3 through 8. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. Benefit number 10. Your body is a prepared temple for God to use. Your body is the new temple that God comes in and do his work through now. Yes, God can use your body now because God is a spirit. And your body is his temple that he's coming down to work in now that you're a believer. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Also in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Benefit number 11, you have a privilege to fast. Fast means to put away the food, everything you're eating and drinking, and give your body, you devote your whole body and your time to God, and God will come and meet with you and talk with you. And that's in Isaiah 58. Find out what a true fast is and what a fake fast is. You have power to fast. Benefit number 11. Benefit number 12, you will be taken up in the rapture or the, or the uh, catching away. And that's in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 55. Hallelujah. Benefit number 13, you have reconciliation with God. And that's in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. You have been reconciled to God. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Reconcile means that you, 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 you can come back and be friends with God. Because he, we was his enemy due to our sinful life. But now you reconciled to God and you can, be, you can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him now. Just because of Jesus' blood and what he did on that cross. Benefit 14. You have redemption through Jesus' blood. And that's in Ephesians 1, 7. Romans 5, 7 through 11. Redemption means that as in another word for if you go to the pawn shop and you put something on layaway, they tell you to come back to redeem it. That means you're coming back for it. So we were all God's children, and Jesus done redeemed us by his blood. That means he's brought us back. He paid for us through his blood. He shed his blood for our sins, and he has redeemed us. All right. Benefit number 15. You've been given a measure of faith, according to Romans 12, 3. 
benefit number 16 you have been given the Holy Spirit according to Ephesians 1 13 and 14 2nd Corinthians 1 verse 22 And I believe Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and 13. You also have access to receive the Holy Ghost, which come from heaven, come down out of heaven to fill you, to give God, to preach God's message. And that's benefit number 17. You can receive power from the Holy Ghost. And that's Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Acts chapter 10 verse 38 the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 19 1 through 7 benefit number 18 you now have the mind of Christ you think like Jesus because Jesus lives in you now by faith if you have faith Jesus living in you 1 Corinthians 2.16 You have the mind of Christ. Benefit number 18. You've been given the mind of Christ. And now you can walk like Christ. According to Philippians chapter 2 verses 2 through 8. Benefit number 19. You have freedom from the old sacrifice system. Freedom from the old sacrifice system. Back before Christ came people used to have to kill animals to get forgiveness from Jesus, for God, from God. They used to have to go cut a goat neck off, or take their guts out. They have to, used to go cut cows and rams because somebody had to die for sin. So God made an opportunity for us to lay our sin on an animal. It had to be a pure, clean animal. And when we lay our hands on that animal, the animal took our sin. And so that animal had to die and shed his blood for our sin. So Jesus now is the new sacrifice. He became that animal that, that gave his blood to God for us. We put our sin on Jesus and God took his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. So now you don't have to go kill a goat or a ram or none of that no more to get forgiveness from God. You can simply get on your knees, confess, and tell and ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins. Hallelujah. What a what a what a blessing. What a benefit. And you can find that in Hebrews chapter 8, the whole chapter. Hebrews chapter 9, the whole chapter. Alright, we're winding down now. Benefit number 20. We have liberty in Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, 2 Corinthians 3:17. We have liberty, which means freedom. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. You don't have to stop doing this, stop doing that. When you're living in Christ, you're not going to want to do these things because you're so free inside. You're so happy. You want to please him. You're not going to want to hurt him. That's liberty in Christ. And the last but not least, benefit number 21. Now that you're a believer and a, a child of God, you will judge angels and the whole world of their sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. You will judge sinners and the angels. Not, not God's angels, but the devil's angels. All the, the angels, angels also mean fallen angels which are devil, which are the devils also. And you're going to judge them with Jesus in heaven. That's my time. There may be other benefits in, in, in the Bible about your salvation. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom and understanding to show you. And all your time before you read your Bible, always ask for wisdom and understanding. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to understand God's word. Remember to always pray for wisdom and understanding. That's my prayer. May Jesus bless you. God bless you. And welcome to the family of God. In Jesus' name, I love you.
peace be upon you. In Jesus' name. Your Tired of having bad experiences with men? Or are you tired of thinking that you have found Mr. Right but only come to find out that you dated Mr. Wrong? Or are you tired of fighting the games and the lies that men come at you with? Or perhaps you are already married and just want to make things better in your marriage. Well stay tuned because I have a stunning message to present to all women about men. see my son again, man. God don't want nothing to do with me. I'm a drunk, man. Look at me. What do you want to do with me? I ain't good enough for heaven, man. I'm a drunk, man. I done lost my... God is love. And this is how much God loved you. He gave his only son so that no one should be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a hope and last in life. You know, God didn't send his son to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. No, he came to put the world right again. He came to help. By believing in him, you are acquitted. Anyone who refused to believe in him is under the death sentence without even knowing it. And why? Because that person's failure to believe in the one of a kind son of God when introduced to him. Man, I'm sick of this, you know what, I'm sick of this life. I want to be saved, man. How, how, do, you, how do you get saved, man? I want to see my son again, man. How do I get to heaven, man? So, what must I do to be saved? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Just as simple as that. Let me lead you in a prayer. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe. I believe. That Jesus. That Jesus. Is your son. Is your son. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. 
And he rose the third day. And he rose the third day. And I want Jesus. And I want Jesus. To be. To be. The Lord of my life. The Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That I'm saved now. That I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, just as simple as that. Just as simple as that. Man, I feel... Man. I feel like a kid again, man.